a reflection of the past and a look into the future is what all forms of art are primarily about. Artistic creation not only evokes a sense of awe, but more importantly, it serves as a symbol of cultural identity and provides continuity to a civilization. Ravaged by time and nature, many artifacts have been forever lost to us. Irrespective of religion, our centers of worship have remained fine examples of aesthetic expression. Enjoying royal patronage, our craftsmen were able to convert temples into epitomes of artistic imagination and creativity. These temples are marvels of architecture and present a unique confluence of various forms of art like painting, sculpture and carving. Wood as a medium of carving has been extensively used in Indian temple architecture. The craftsmen who transform stones and pieces of wood into objects of high art might have been forgotten, but their creations, though ravaged by the vagaries of nature and time, still retain a grandeur that evokes memories of a golden era. The tradition of wood carving, with 5,000 years of history to boast of, is still alive thanks to a few craftsmen. Devan Nair, hailing from Muttattara on the outskirts of Trivandrum city, is one such master craftsman and entrepreneur. He employs over 15 craftsmen to produce idols of gods and goddesses as well as other curios that are a testimony to their expertise and talent. To be successful, an entrepreneur has to keep an eye on all stages of the craft right from the selection of the wood. White wood is generally used as it is easily available besides being light in weight and soft. The wood for carving is cut from the main portion of the tree trunk. This consists of the internal heartwood that supplies the structural or supportive strength to the tree. Heartwood is generally darker and more uniformly colored than sapwood. Carving is a long drawn process. It starts with the sketching of the figure on the wood. If the image is of Ganesha or any other deity, the sketch conforms to the traditional styles of form and proportion. The actual process of carving starts with the chipping of wood. Carving is a subtractive process where a solid mass is shaped by cutting, chiseling and smoothening it to create a particular form. This subtractive process is carried out by using simple tools such as mallets and gouge. As in the case of Ganesha, the idols of Buddha and the Good Shepherd are given shape following traditional imagery. To see these forms come alive from lifeless blocks of wood is an amazing and enchanting experience. Once the primary shape is achieved, the figure is ready for etching out the finer details.
At this stage, the craftsman gives free rein to his imagination. Here, the Buddha gradually comes alive as the eyes, nose and the lips slowly take shape. Every stroke of the mallet and every movement of the chisel adds more details to the figure. Now the artist starts working on the hair, the dress and the ornaments. Often, the eyes and the face are given a final shape only after finishing the other parts of the body, the dress and the ornaments. This task is usually entrusted to a master craftsman as this requires great care and skill. Once all the details are carved out, these figures are smoothened with sandpaper. Repeated rubbing makes the surface more even. The figure is now ready for a coat of polish. This polishing gives it the desired smoothness, charm and finish. It is not only the epic heroes and deities that these craftsmen give shape to. Often, their deft hands produce secular figures that exemplify their imagination and creativity. It is a joy to watch the movements of the chisel that slowly makes Mahatma Gandhi and his disciples emerge from a piece of wood. In carving such figures, there is no room for exaggeration of body contours, facial expressions, robes and ornaments. Though the tools are the same and the techniques similar to those used in carving deities, the task of carving figures like that of Mahatma Gandhi, for instance, is more demanding. Demanding because the craftsman has to capture true-to-life features of the personality. Devi Devan Malta Vigrangla Jayapurthiki Adinda Nilpum Bhavu Mirubo Okta Tanna Parambaragada Stylei Tanna Nilpum Bhavu Mirubo Okta Tanna Parambaragada Stylei Tanna Nilpum Bhavu Adhan Fancy Fear Ii Charitra Purusham Maridai Nandra Nadakan Maridai Kya Vigrangla Jayapurthiki Adhan Nilpum Adhan Nilpum Namla Jayapurthiki Adhan Nilpum 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 Adhan Nil These craftsmen strive for utmost perfection in every figure they carve. And they achieve this perfection by sheer hard work, which also results in handsome earnings for them.
എൻ്റെ കൂടെ പത്ത് പതിനഞ്ച് ജോലിക്കാർക്കും ജോലി ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് അവരൊക്കെ നല്ല പണി ചെയ്യുന്നവർക്ക് ആ മാസം ആഴ്ചയിൽ നാലായിരം അയ്യായിരം രൂപ കിട്ടുന്നവരുണ്ട് പറയാം പടി അറിഞ്ഞതായിട്ടൊരുക്കുക അതിൻ്റേതായ കിട്ടുകയുള്ളൂ ഇത് ഞാൻ ബാംഗ്ലൂർ മദ്രാസ് ഹൈദരാബാദ് എന്ന സ്ഥലങ്ങളിലൊക്കെ ഞാൻ കയറ്റി അയക്കുന്നുണ്ട് വിദേശത്ത് നിന്നും എനിക്ക് ഏജൻറ്റ് മുഖാന്തരം ആർഡർ വിളിച്ച് തരുന്നുണ്ട് ഞാൻ പണി ചെയ്ത് കൊടുക്കുന്നുണ്ട് പിന്നെ ഈ രംഗത്ത് ഇത് പണി പഠി പഠിക്കാനായിട്ട് ആൾക്കും വളരെ കുറവാണ് പക്ഷേ ഇപ്പം ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ മകനെ ഈ പണി പഠിപ്പിക്കുകയാണ് Carving now is a lucrative profession as there is always a ready market for such crafts. The State Handicrafts Corporations provide a common platform for the craftsmen to market their products in domestic and foreign markets. More importantly, these carvings of every shape and size reflect our rich and diverse culture. They illuminate not just the past but shed their fragrance over future generations as well.